cool. Catherine Barron. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um now what we're gonna what we're gonna do today, do mm -hmm. you do you have any idea of of what we're gonna do? Yes. What is what we're is gonna your... play skate? Skate three. Skate three, which I have watched you and Jude play. Yes. Um you have never played this. I have not. Um and we're gonna be conversing as, as we do it. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna you know boys do better at like conversing while they they do things than than girls do. Yes, I assume that uh, maybe I hadn't really thought of that. At at the very least, you're gonna play a little bit, and then I can play for a majority of it. If that's if you're not the best at it. Oh, I'm not going to be the best at, at communicating while you play. No, at playing the game. <laughs> oh, I understand that. That's the whole goal. Oh, okay. You want to watch me? Yes. Break my neck multiple times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sure. So for those of you who, for the people listening or watching who don't know who you are, mm. who are you? I am Catherine Barron, the mother of Tristan, Ben, Sam, and Jude Barron, all boys. Nice. Um, wife to Mac, daughter to Wilder and Elaine. Yeah, but like, what have you... What have I done? It, what have I accomplished in my life? Exactly. Well, that's why I started out with the boys. The PCU library. What's up? Um, I'm I'm gonna set it so that play mode is. <laughs> I hope not hardcore. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna set the camera angle to high. Okay. Because because you tend to appreciate that. Uh huh. Um. And so I'm going to play a little bit while you talk, and then I'll I'll show you how. Oh, no. That is awful. Yeah, that's not the, the ER best. The ER nurse in me is very <laughs> concerned uh <-huh>. about <laughs> I'm, I'm the health and safety of these these boys So playing this, uh, riding the skateboard around. While, while I'm um, getting a little, little warmed up on here, um, what is, uh, how do you and dad meet? Oh, Dad and I met at church camp when I was 14. <clears throat> it was a Pentecostal church camp. Do you know what a Pentecostal church camp is? No. Remind you know what me. like a Pentecostal church is? <clears throat> no. It does it have something to do with Protestantism? It does. Well, I mean, it's a Protestant youth camp, but mm. They don't, they don't consider themselves Protestants. Like, you know, as Catholics, we divide the world up into Catholics and Protestants. Uh -huh. we, well, it's really Catholics, Protestants, and pagans, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're either Catholic or you're Protestant or you're just a complete pagan. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. We might put... Anyway. <laughs> um, so when you're a, when you're a Protestant, um, you don't say that you're a Protestant. You're just a Christian. So it would just have been... We would have said it was a Christian youth camp. Mm-hmm. And uh, since Catholics, as every good Protestant knows, are not are not really Christian anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> At least that's what I thought. <clears throat> so Pentecostal means it's like got more of a charismatic bent. So like at Pentecost, when the gifts, of the D Holy Spirit descended <laughs> upon the church, certain gifts were given, right? So... <clears throat> might be the gift of tongues or um, prophecy or healing. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of emphasis on those gifts in the Pentecostal church. And one of the things that sort of characterizes that is praise and worship, right? Mm -hmm. um, a little more freedom in, in, in your worship. And then um, being slain in the spirit. So as Catholics, we believe that you received the Holy Spirit at your baptism, right? That there's yes. no difference between um, like being slain in the Spirit. That, that, that isn't a thing that exists in the Catholic Church. But in like the Pentecostal Church, you would have um, being slain in the Spirit. So you would be baptized in the Holy Spirit at a separate time from your actual baptism. That baptism, that baptism which would not occur at your, you know, when you're a baby, but would occur at some point in your when you're older. When you're older, like when you, as an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, that's what uh -huh. they would say during your baptism. Um, 
But uh, in the Pentecostal church, you might get slain in the spirit. And that was not something I grew up with. Uh huh. But my mom sort of got into that in the 70s. That, sort of the the char- 70s will do that to you. Yeah, the charismatic movement. <laughs> Ugh, got into the Catholic church too. And um, so my mom got a little more into that. And there was a preacher named Mark Rutland who at one point had been a Methodist preacher and had had sort of a... a Conversion? Kind of, what? Well, yes, but like a mystical kind of experience. Mm. He was... Uh, tried to commit suicide, tried to kill himself multiple times. Uh-huh. And like, I think twice put a gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger and the gun didn't go off. Wow. Yeah. So it like it, he, anyway, it, it radically changed his life. Mm-hmm. And he eventually started this youth camp called Youth Advance in Norman Park, Georgia. And my mom heard about it and, and she sent myself and then a friend of mine from Swainsboro uh, to this youth camp i was 12 the first time i went seventh grade i think Mm -hmm. it was summer after seventh grade and i went without like i mean i had my friend coleman went with me but like we weren't in the same group because he was older than i was Mm. and so i was very much alone i had only ever gone to youth camp at epworth by the sea prior to that and i had always been with my cousin leela and so it was just a little it was a little scary and the first day i cried and i called my mom and asked her to come get me and I was really upset that she wouldn't. Uh-huh. And then by the fourth day, I was called because I was supposed to leave early on Friday. Mm-hmm. And the fourth day that I was there, I called and asked her, please, 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 <laughs> can I stay till Saturday? <laughs> Sounds like a very me thing to do. Because I was having such a good time. So um, anyway, I, your dad and I did not meet the first year. And I don't think the I think it was the third year I was there. How many so, years did you go? Um, from seventh to eleventh grade. Wow. So the summer after seventh grade, summer after eighth grade. I think he and I met the summer after ninth grade. Uh huh. Um, so I was yeah fourteen at the time, I believe. I never heard that. I I just always thought that you went like one time, and then that's no. the time when no, I was there for five, four or five years, and then went as a counselor actually, one year. Oh. Cool. Um, and, uh, when we were in college, actually, he did, dad didn't go, but I, I went, um, but anyway, yeah, we met at, uh, at that camp and we're really just really good friends. I met him and this, uh, uh, his best friend, Ben Dallas I actually met Ben first and then they had another roommate. So there were three of them that were roommates together. And the third roommate's name was Sam. Sam what? Sam Nunnally. <sighs> Sounds kind of familiar. Yep. Yep. Maybe, maybe somebody's named after him. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Um, so y'all met at Youth Advance. Uh-huh. And then... This was before the age of cell Age phones. of technology, yes. So we, you, you did, and you, you would, you might get each other's phone number, but phone, calling long distance was very expensive. It was mm-hmm. literally like a dollar a minute to call someone. Mm-hmm. And so my dad would get very mad at me if I did that, understandably so, because a dollar meant a lot more in 19. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's yeah. see what year this has been in 1991 than it does now. And so we exchanged, um, addresses and I think some letters were sent mm. back and forth. Not a lot, but a few, just enough to say hello. And, yeah. um, I have a couple of letters from Ben Dallas, who's now father Ben Dallas. And, uh, I actually did not, I was, you know, Ben and your dad were like good. I was good friends with them. I actually thought Sam was the cutest. Really? Of all the guys. Yeah. Sam was the cutie pretty pie. pretty funny. And um, he, he and his brother were in a band at the time. Ooh, and so mysterious. So mysterious. And so he and his brother came. I had, because I was like the head of the youth group or, you know, in my town. And so I actually had them come and perform a concert in my hometown with their band. Isn't that fun? That is pretty neat. So much fun. So, uh, yes. But other than that, I haven't seen, I don't or talk. I think maybe exchange, like, like chatted back and forth on Facebook, like maybe once or twice. Sam Nunnally, just, just enough to let him know, like, hey, so I, I know this is weird, but like we named our kid after you. But only because it was such a, um, I was from a small town. Mm-hmm. And so the people that I knew I had known for a really long time, very rarely did like new people move to town. So the, the group of friends that I had, I'd had for a really long time. And, uh, so when I met, uh, Mac and Ben and Sam, 
they were just they were so much fun and so smart and so clever oh so it just yeah so like i had just such a great in my mind like they are they are just such a great trio Mm -hmm. of 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 guys and so when your dad and i met in college so we met first at youth camp and we're together i think two years at youth camp like dad didn't come the last year i was there Mm. Except maybe just to pop in for like a one of the evening services. But you didn't date or anything. No, you, no, no, were no. Just there. Yeah, we were just friends um, at youth camp, and then you know both were on separate sides of the state. And he went off to Lagrange for college. I went off to Kentucky, and then after two, he after two years at Lagrange College, he transferred to Georgia Southern University in Statesboro. And um, after two years at Asbury College, I did a year of like a mission trip kind of thing. And then my brother passed away. My younger brother passed away. And by this point, I was living at home. And the one college I always said, I will never go to this school. Mm -hmm. Never. This is the one college I will not go to. I ended up at Georgia Southern University (laughs) as a transfer student. So we were, I went to a Baptist student union on campus. We ever, you know, you have these Baptist student unions mm-hmm. and uh, they were having like a um, transfer freshman opening day kind of party. And uh, this girl that I had met, she wasn't my roommate, but it was just a girl I'd met. What was her name? Stephanie, I think. Um, she and I decided to go to this party. It was within walking distance of my apartment and we went. And while we were at the party, I kept saying to her, like, I think I know that guy. There was this guy there, but he had a beard and he was Uh, wearing a hat. mm -hmm. And I was like, I think I know him. (laughs) And um, at one point he had gone inside because mostly the party was like out on the front lawn, but he had gone inside. And so I said to her, I was like, I'm going to go in and see if that's who I think it is. And so I walk in the door and as I walk in, he's walking across like the the cafeteria area he's walking towards me and before i can say his name he says katherine smith <laughs> and i said mac baron anyway and so we reconnected just like just honestly as friends at mm-hmm. first and but not very much like just sort of just acquaintances like, like yeah like hey i know you and yeah, yes yeah, yeah. and then you know called up briefly and then that was it and then um, there was this one night where a bunch of people had decided to get together and there were, believe it or not, there were two different Macs in our, in the Baptist Student Union sort of group. Uh-huh. There was Mac Brown and Mac Barron. <laughs> and super distinct names. Super, and they, and it was MAC too, which is, you know, you don't hear very often. And so I thought it was, they were getting together at Mac Brown's apartment but that evening, I just got kind of like, I don't want to do anything. And I went and got Crystal Burgers and I was just sitting around my apartment watching TV. And I got a phone call and it was Mac Barron. And he was like, hey, what are you doing? You know how dad is. Jude is very similar to this, actually. <laughs> like where he just wants people around to do stuff with. Mm. And so he was by himself and uh, he was like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just sitting here eating crystals, watching TV. And he was like, why aren't you at? my house and i was like oh i thought it was at mac brown's house and he was like no it's here and no one came (laughs) why don't you come over i was like okay sure (laughs) like i didn't even really want to go but anyway so i went over and uh after i finished my crystal burgers and we just ended up just talking and eating grilled cheese sandwiches and i mean literally stayed up to like I don't know, three o'clock in the morning, maybe. Mm-hmm. Eventually we went to Dunkin' Donuts. Nice. That was at like 4.30 in the morning. And then like, but you know, nothing untoward occurred. Just literally just hanging out, having a good time. Talking. And um, did that like twice more. And then he, dad started dating someone else. And then a week later he broke up with her. <laughs> and um, that's where I get it from. And then, uh, we exchanged letters over Christmas and came back and Bob's your uncle. Just, just sort of happened. Just sort of happened. So y'all were both Protestant before you. Yes, very Protestant. So how did that conversion, because you were the, the person who really started it, right? Like you sort of no. convinced dad? No. 
That's no? not true. What, do you really think that's the way it worked? I mean, I... These stories have been told to me, like, occasionally, but I think I hear it slightly different every time, or mm. I'm not paying attention to certain parts sometimes and certain parts other times, so... No, so I was reading this book called... We, we were dating pretty seriously. This was maybe a year later. Mm-hmm. And I was reading a book called A Severe Mercy by Sheldon Van Auken, which is a memoir of uh, Sheldon and his wife, Davy, and their conversion, their friendship with C.S. Lewis in the 40s, uh, 40s and 50s, and then his eventual, he, he and she eventually converted to Christianity. Uh-huh. Um, Sheldon Van Auken converted to Catholicism later in his life, but I did not know that at the time. I was just reading this book, which was actually came out in the 70s. Mm. And we called it the crying book because every time I read a chapter, <laughs> I would cry. And if you've ever read the book, I won't spoil it for you. I mean, if you've read it, you know, but if you haven't, I won't spoil it for you. But um, uh, anyway, it's a crying book. It makes me sad. And so eventually, I can't remember... Honestly, can't remember if dad had already read the book or if I was reading it and then I was just reading pieces to him. But there's a por- a portion of the book where C.S. Lewis and Shunem and Auckland are passing like a, a uh, their letters back and forth. And in one of the letters, they're talking about worshiping Mary. And C.S. Lewis, you know, he doesn't say it's terrible, but he just says, like, I just wonder if any any love that we give to Mary is really misplaced and ought to be given to Christ. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not like completely negative about Christians. I mean, um, about Catholics, Catholics. And, and Mary, but you know, there's yet definitely like an, um, not a positive spin on that. And I was like, I, I was like, I totally agree with that because Catholics <laughs> are the way they worship are Mary is awful. And your dad, apropos of nothing says, Oh, well, I mean, I might become Catholic one day. <laughs> so what was the image of Catholicism to you who was a Protestant, who were born in the South? Well, to be fair to Catholics, I had never been to a Catholic service. Mm-hmm. I had never really researched Catholicism. I had not, except for the Bible, right? Scripture. And then Martin Luther onwards. Mm. And then I was a Methodist, right? So I knew that... Um, John Wesley and his brother Charles were both Anglican ministers who moved to America and then founded the Methodist Church. But as far as like what happened in the 1500 years prior to the Protestant Reformation, Mm -hmm. it I didn't ever think about that at all, ever. But in general, I thought Protestant, I mean, I thought Catholics were probably going to hell. There were maybe some sincere Catholics that might like that might make it. Uh Uh-huh. But... But that would be by accident, not by design. So did you did you meet anyone Catholic? And you? No, I didn't really know Catholics. Well, it, it is the South, so it is just the South. You don't meet few. Catholics. I mean, every now, I mean, every now and then, you might meet a Catholic. But I didn't ever talk to them. Like, come to find out, there was my um, English teacher, my junior year of high school. Uh, I can't remember her name now. Uh, Kathleen. Oh my gosh, Terry. He was really important. He, he was the president of the college at the time. I can't, I can't believe I can't remember her name. Um, anyway, uh, they were Catholic. They were like the only Catholic family in town. He was actually, he was the president of East Georgia college when I was a teenager. And then he left the presidency of East Georgia College to go and be the president of Southern Catholic College. Remember the the college that um, John Henry went to that that closed right before he graduated? No. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know? Well, I mean, I've heard stories of him in college, but I didn't know which college. Yeah, Southern Catholic College. Father Higgins was the chaplain. You didn't know this? No. Yes, Father Higgins was the chaplain. Angie, Aaron Vermillion, Mike Vermillion... John Henry, um, uh, who was your youth group guy before John with John Henry? Andrew, Andrew, and his wife Julia. They were in. Co- they oh, were well, all at. That makes sense. They were all at Southern Catholic. Um, do you remember Captain Jeff? That was the SQPN guy. I th- no, but I remember you y'all were talking about to him. 
Catholic in a small town with Mac and Catherine. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's Captain Jeff. His youngest daughter also went there. Anyway, but it like it, it was poorly um, managed. Like mm. they sold out to the Legionnaires or something. And then they ended up having to close the college, like for lack of money, like mm-hmm. just over spring break. Like they called everybody over spring break and says and said, come and get your come and get your stuff because the college is closing. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So they all had to figure out like what they were going to do after that. Yeah. How many? Wait. So it was. That's a lot of people. How are people not like super mad at that? People are super mad at that. Like what are they supposed to do? There's nothing they could do. I guess that's true. But they. um, Steubenville like was very gracious, I think, and took their credits. Mm, And like John Henry, like if you talk to John Henry, that's where he eventually like graduated from was Steubenville. Really? Mm-hmm. But only because I think he was in his senior year. Like uh-huh. his, se- like he only had like two months to go. That's why he um, transferred instead of just dropping out or. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm. Cause he was almost finished. Yeah. And um, then Angie and Angie went there too. That's where they met Father Ray. They all met there. Father Ray was there too? Yes. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Father Higgins was Father Ray's chaplain at, Small at Southern world. Catholic. Yeah. So, so uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I cannot remember their last name. Ugh. Anyway, so that family, we knew them very well in Swainsboro. And then he left to go be the president of Southern Catholic College. And his wife went with him. But I don't know. I can't remember how long he was actually the president there. But they moved up here. It was in Dawsonville. That's where the college was. Southern Cal? Southern Catholic College was in Dawsonville, Georgia. Wow. Wow. Dude. Um. So you. All right. So those are the only real Catholics I knew, but I didn't. I never talked to them about their Catholicism. Yeah. So you just knew they were they were reasonable people. Like they weren't oh, terrible yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh-uh, so you read us Severe Mercy, and Dad was like, "I may be Catholic. I might become Catholic one day." This is the guy I was planning on marrying. Uh huh. Might become Catholic one day. So I decided to break up with him. <laughs> like we're in the car. Driving. Like, like that moment? Yeah, in my head I was like, well, crap. <laughs> now we have to break up. Wow. But I didn't. You didn't break up with him? Mm-mm. So what, so what did I do? That's your question, yeah. right? yeah, yeah. Well, I went to the library and I checked out every book they had on Catholicism in the library. Only Catherine Barron. Only <laughs> Catherine Barron would do that. <laughs> and uh, and then I asked him, like, after I had done a little bit of reading, I asked him, like, you know, what, why? Mm-hmm. Why would you become Catholic? And so then that kind of got us into it. And at the time, his roommate, Aaron <gasps> Griffin had also kind of been dab he wasn't catholic but had been sort of i say dabbling in catholicism like he had been on and off interested mm. and um so so the three of us would sit around you know when i was over there there at their uh trailer the cave and um <laughs> we would just talk catholicism and what the different why and why not you know and mm-hmm. what the the different points of contention were and and what they actually believed i mean you know it's crazy you don't i didn't know what catholics believed honestly i mean i kind of knew like the saints mary and the pope right the pope was just like a dude that's, a, that's all you thought i mean he was the head of the catholic church but mm-hmm. he was probably you know not christian <laughs> even know why i thought that like it's just so bizarre to me now but anyway um so i started reading and then like you read about you read about the eucharist and you're like oh my gosh seriously like seriously like that's really what they believe Uh uh-huh they believe that the bread and wine not just symbolizes the body and the blood of Christ, like the mem- a memorial service that, you know, when Jesus at the Last Supper, Jesus said, do this in memory of me. Well, you know, Protestants do that sometimes, some people more than others. 
some Protestant churches more than others, but it's very much like a, like a, it's just a symbolic gesture as opposed to anything with, with real meaning. Mm -hmm. But, but for most Protestants, that's the way anything physical is. It's not. It's just like a, a symbol. It's just a symbol. We believe they're sacramentals. Yeah. They actually confer some measure of grace or blessing upon us. So like we bless water because we believe that the water, the blessed water in and of itself has not magical spirit, <laughs> but spiritual properties mm -hmm. that confer grace along with it. So, but I didn't know all that. I mean, I just, so I just started reading and then there were a couple of books. One of them was called, um, I think Christianity and Catholicism, born fundamentalist, born again, Catholic, um, where it just, the, these, the guys that kind of laid out like how they went from being Protestant to being Catholic. Mm -hmm. I started reading their journeys and then, um, Scott Hahn, who is, well, everyone knows Scott Hahn is now. But at the time, I'd never heard of him. And then Mac had uh, a series of talks or this one talk that he did called The Fourth Cup. Scott Hahn did. Scott Hahn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was on tape. And I, so I listened to the tape um, in the car. I was driving like it was like, I can't remember how long it was. But anyway, from Statesboro to Swainsboro, I had to go over there and work that afternoon and so kind of like C.S. Lewis, I think he talks about his conversion, like he got on the bus and he wasn't a Christian and he got off the bus and he was Christian. Mm -hmm. So it was very similar, I think, with me and um, listening to Scott Hahn and the fourth cup like there. And I can't tell you exactly what it is, but it has to do with it has to do with a biblical under like the Catholic biblical understanding like ha for catholics how the bible fits together and what mm. jesus means when he says this is my body. this is my body or what he means when he says it is finished mm -hmm. and how how is that different oh because the the whole concept of of the the sacrifice of the mass like the the origin that is that is that is it is concluded so it's it's in a similar way to the priest saying the the mass is ended go in peace. No. All right. So at the Jewish Passover meal, mm -hmm. which is what Jesus and his disciples celebrate celebrated at mm. the last supper, there are four cups at the meal at an official like a Jewish Passover meal. Well, if you read the account of the last supper in the gospels, at the Last Supper on Thursday, Jesus only has three cups. And he says at the end of the meal, I will not drink again of the cup of the vine until I come into my kingdom. And the next time he drinks wine is when he is on the cross. Yeah. And after he drank the wine, he said, it is finished and dies. And we are back. So we talked uh, a little bit about Catholicism. Um, a lot, actually. We did talk a lot about Catholicism. We um not worried about where we stopped because we don't know where we stopped. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you play. Uh -huh. um, I'm just going to run you through the controls real quick. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see how you get to, um, where you get to. For for us... I like to figure it out. Okay. There you go. Um, for you audio listeners, it, this part might be a bit um, frustrating. However, if you are if you are listening on Spotify, you can open and just watch the video. Um, if you're on any other platform, you uh, I'm sorry, but you're you're doomed. You can watch yeah, it on, on YouTube. We'll, we'll give a we'll, we'll give try audio. To, we'll try to like give audio commentary. Yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll be like the the commentators on. Um, on um, like road shows or or boxing matches. Sure, sure, sure. Well, Catherine Barron's over here. She's riding in this sort of ditch part at the observatory. She's doing a pretty pretty all right job for for um, someone of her skill level. <laughs> a middle aged white woman. A middle aged white woman playing Skate Whoop. Three. Oh, nice. Um, so for those of you who don't know Skate Three, and I know very little about this game, but 
Skate 3 is um, a game about skateboards that you use the controllers to do the controls to do cool tricks. And that is the whole game. And the, the sort of premise is you're, you're starting a skate company um, or a skateboard company and you as the skater have to promote the boards that you're selling. So um, I thought it would be a very productive thing for mom to play something that she's never played before and never thought or desired to play before. <laughs> so um, that's mom that's, is not that's what unknown we're doing. to video games. Yeah, like there's a <clears throat> yeah you did play on the the PS one PlayStation one I heard I uh, I did more I think it was PS two when it came to um, uh, when it came to oh man I fell when it came to I like Jack and Daxter mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that game. When you guys, so I remember Sonic the Hedgehog. I remember enjoying playing Sonic the Hedgehog when I was, uh, my brother got that, uh, my brother Wilder had the, what was it, that Sega Genesis? Mm -hmm. He had that. And when Colby was little, Colby's my youngest brother. He's 15 years younger than I am. So I was like in college and Colby was like three or four. And uh, it had like a demo mode, not demo mode, but when the game was just sitting there. Free with, play mode. Yeah. Well, not even free play, but the game was just... Like, when you weren't playing the game, mm -hmm. Sonic would just start doing his thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Like an idle animation. <laughs> Sneezing. Yes, an idle animation. Like what I'm doing right now. And uh, so Colby, all you had to do was just sit Colby in the chair <laughs> in, front of the, in front of the monitor and just let him hold the controller. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't even have to plug the controller up. You would just he let would him just... hold the controller and just let him do idle play. And he would think he was playing. And he loved it so i remember sonic and the the noise when you would get the little rings the coins or whatever so satisfying and then when sonic would like die and all of his coins would just explode out of him and then you have to try to catch as many of them as you could mm -hmm. it was so much fun and so with that memory in mind when the lego Lego, games lego dimensions the like no oh like the yeah yeah the, the batman the batman and, lego and uh -huh. lord of the rings let was it lord of the rings mm -hmm. yeah and harry potter legos mm -hmm. and then i think the one i played the most was the avengers oh really you don't remember me playing that game no with you? but i loved that game there's so video much. of me playing that game with you guys upstairs super fun it's it's probably dead Give me just a moment, listeners. Uh, Hold on. Yep. How does he know? He just senses it like a dog senses <gasps> a tsunami. Oh, man. Just just keep talking Why while you play you, you don't have your phone? Just call him. He he called me. Uh, Here, we'll, we'll call him live. We'll call him live. Live Let's on the podcast. Do it. So what I'm trying to do now is get out of this hole that I'm in. Ugh. Can you can you see your, you can press Y to um to walk? Yeah, but like if I want to get out of this hole, what do I do? So on the the right joystick, uh -huh. if you go down, you'll crouch. Okay. And okay. and then go up with it. Uh-huh. The one next to Publix. And him at Hammond's Crossing. So if you if you go down and then up with it really quickly, then you'll do what's called an ollie. Uh huh. And then that'll build you speed. Okay. And then you can sort of fly out of it. So go with the right joystick, go down and up. There you go. There you go. And you're back in. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, wow, you're you're really that. good at not, <laughs> not getting out of this thing. Uh, all right, hold on. All right, what do I need to do? So, as as you're just going forward, don't try to escape. Just just okay, go, go go around, around the circle. All right, just 
go down and then up with the right joystick. That's called an ollie. Okay. And then with the left joystick, you can sort of orient where you'll go. Okay. So if you do that, then you'll build up speed. And if you land with your board straight, then you can you can build up speed. And then, like, you can, you can like, pop down and up. Mm-hmm. And then if you do that enough, you'll gain enough speed to fly out. So really quickly go down and up. There you go. But make make the board go straight when you do it. I'm a very good teacher. Really quick, like snap it down and up. There you go. And you did, a, <laughs> did a half, sort of half kickflip. <laughs> Can I just walk out? Can I just get off my board? Yeah, press Y. And then just hold A. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Can I? No. No? Okay. Hold A. Okay. There, there we, we go. There we go. All right. Yay. Good job. So what is one... What's one life lesson, the biggest life lesson that you've learned this year? Oh my god! In the past year, in and the then year. in your entire life. Wow! In the past year, I would say, don't give up on certain ideas. Like you just never know what surprises might life is going to throw at you. Just when you think you know what's going to happen next, mm. you don't know what's going to happen next. Like, do you want me to be more specific? Sure. Okay. So one would be getting a um, brochure in the mail from a boarding school in Pennsylvania, which explained what the boarding school was being so intrigued by the the brochure the brochure that you look it up online and being so intrigued by what you see online that you actually bring up the idea to your husband that hey what would you think about sending our <laughs> youngest child to boarding, boarding school. school and then that actually becoming a reality mm -hmm. so so that's number one and then number two would be your 17 year old who swore to you swore to you mm -hmm. he would never attend college <laughs> then deciding on his own well i mean you know he had a conversation with uh with a friend but deciding basically on his own that you know what i might be willing to give this a try and it turns out to be the one college in the world that you'd most like him to go to exactly so it's uh it's great but it's also like because i um i think you and i are both melancholic cholerics mm -hmm. but you tend to be and maybe this is just a product of your your youth maybe eventually you won't be this way but i don't know you tend to be more optimistic about things than i am i am the optimist i know and so um because you tend to be more optimistic about things um and i tend to be more pessimistic i'm cautiously optimistic mm. that this is all gonna work out and everything's gonna be great but i also know so this is a big life lesson and something i think i was trying to explain to our son ben last night who's 20 um and was genuinely like it got emotional about and i think uh like genuinely come like it really comes from a good place why he was emotional which is that there were Apparently, like HBO bought the rights, or Paramount, or whatever, bought the rights to the to this um, to somebody's um, artistic creations, mm -hmm. which are in the end just cartoons. But they're their artistic creations, and because they bought the rights to them, and they've now decided they don't want them out there, um, like they're not going to like they're buried kind of mm -hmm. in the di in digital purgatory. And Ben was like, he got really emotional about it. And, you know, like he was like, as an artist, like the reason you do what you do is, um, oh, that was rough. 
wipe out. The reason you do what you do is because you want your art to be seen. And I was trying to explain to him, like, you have to do the thing that you're called to do for something other than other people. Mm -hmm. Because everything ultimately turns to dust that we do. Mm -hmm. Like, the only thing that's going to live past us is, like, our children, you know? And only in the sense that their souls live forever. Because it's possible our children won't outlive us. It's possible our children will die before we do. That certainly happened to my parents. Mm -hmm. I had a, a child die. I had a miscarriage, you know. So, um, uh, so you you can't hold things too tightly. You you just can't. Mm -hmm. Like my mom passed away, you know, at fifty seven. Both of my grandmothers died in their fifties. Um, like I said, I had a brother that passed away. So like you cannot hold the things of this world too tightly or you'll, you'll lose your mind. Like, I really do think you, it's part of why a lot of people get depressed and because they, I mean, there's this forgetting that everything in this world is passing away mm -hmm. and only, you know, only the souls of, of human beings live forever. That's as far as what, what's in this world. Oh, Oh, pick. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Crash. If you hold down LB, left bumper. Uh huh. And the left, you got it. Uh huh. And then press up on the D pad. Uh huh. Or hold it down. Hold down up on the B, the D pad. Up on the D pad. What's yeah, the D the, pad? The like the sort of cross. Uh huh. Thing. If you hold up on it. Then I, I set a marker, um, so you'll go back to that because oh, it's at the top nice. of the hill. Okay. Um. So what about the greatest life lesson you've ever learned? No, that's that's what I was gonna say. That's that's is uh, not that's, not, not to hold, hold on not to, to hold don't, mm -hmm. yeah don't hold things too tightly. Mm -hmm. Um. Because honestly, like just when you think it's all perfect and everything's the way you want it to be, like something's gonna change. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, life, life is always moving forward. Like things are always changing. We're all always changing all the time. And, you know, certainly dad and I, uh, your dad and I have been talking more and more and it's really becoming more real. Like this idea of how quiet things are going to be around here come, you know, come August, um, Ben's moving out and you're moving to Wyoming and mm -hmm. Jude's moving to Pennsylvania and y'all will be home summers and, um, but you're going to be gone for four. Do you realize that you're going to be gone for four months? Like, we're not going to see you for four months. Wow. You know, I was hoping it would be that that length, but I never really thought about it. So, July? July to December. To December. Wow. That's so, going to be that's gonna be a radical change. That has never happened in my entire life. I know. And it doesn't happen for most kids. Most it, kids that go off to college don't go away for four months. And the longest I've been away is two weeks. Is two weeks, and that was so weird because it completely changed. <laughs> you did like a like a headstand. <laughs> um, it completely like Wyoming wasn't home, and here wasn't home, so I was I was. Why well, wasn't here home? Because I spent two weeks in, in Wyoming. So when you came back here, it, it felt so alien. It, it didn't feel like home. Yeah. So I was philosophically homeless. Hmm. Which sounds like a great title to a book. So do you, yeah, it does sound like a great title to a book. Do you, do you think that you'll, hmm. I don't know. I kind of get you. I felt that way after my freshman year of college when I came home. Like I, cause I moved to Kentucky, you know, mm -hmm. and lived in Asbury for a while. And, and you know, college, a college dorm is not home. Mm. And I like a lot of people go off to college and like the people that are there are like the friends that they have their freshman year. They kind of stick with mm -hmm. that did not happen to me. Like I had this really great group of friends my freshman year. But by the end of freshman year, we had all kind of gone. They were all snakes. No, no, no. They were good people. They just went to different places. Like two, of, two of the guys in our group went to another school. And then my roommate who was part of that group, she also went to another school. Mm. And so like the friend group all kind of broke up. And so the second year was, I knew that going into my second year would be weird. And then um, when I came home, my sister had taken over my room, which oh, is fair. I mean, yeah. I, I left, but 
like you're not gonna have that experience like you're gonna come home and you're you're still gonna have your room mm-hmm. but i came home and i <laughs> what do you mean jude you're leaving at the same time i yeah, am you're gonna be yeah, but he doesn't just get his room forever not forever but for now um that's not the way that works but you're not gonna be here anyway um so when i came home and then i um i got a job at a nursing home my freshman year I totally forgot about that. Ah, it was awful. So like, I, uh, I, I hated that. It was like a three to 11 job. So I'd go in at three, come home at 11. Everybody would be asleep. Um, I, uh, I'd sleep really late and like nothing felt I don't know. Nothing felt right. It was mm-hmm. really bizarre. I don't know that you're going to have that same experience. What I do really you, don't. What do you mean? When you come home, I think, um, I think a lot of your friends that are here, like that you're friends with, will still be here for you to hang out with. Like well, Camden and Henry and yeah, but that that's crowd. the thing is that uh, I talked to Haley, the the friend who goes to to the college I'm going to, uh-huh. and she said. She she spends a lot of time hanging out with friends and like doing social stuff. Uh-huh. And I said, were you a very social person before you went to WCC? And she said, no. Huh. So uh, I'm I'm hoping my my hope is that I will <laughs> <laughs> get run over by a car like mom did in <laughs> Skate Three just just then. Um. I'm hoping that I'll find my people because because she says by she said by the end of like by the end of your first semester, Mm -hmm. you're going to know everyone. Right. As if you had gone on a first date with them. (laughs) Like that's how well, you know, you know, because it's such a small school. Yeah. And so that that's I'm excited to to figure that out, because even like at Bosco, I, I was never that close with. Well, because it's, Everybody. it's very different in a like a high school situation where people go home and they're mostly yeah, at home, yeah, yeah. and in a in a college situation where you live together, you live together. Yeah. Like everything you do is with these people. And everything. It's, it's not like you could escape either because it's it's, it's Lander, such a, Wyoming. Yeah, it's very small, but 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 you do fun stuff. Like yeah. on a Friday afternoon, you're like, you guys want to go hiking in the mountains this weekend? Sure, let's go. Like, mm-hmm. and you have the freedom to do that because mm-hmm. you're you know 18 years old. You're all. Um, luckily you'll be 18 when you get back from your, uh, my, that's so interesting that it's so funny. Cause I'm going to go on this three week hiking trip. Uh-huh. I'm going to be 17 when I leave and I'm going to become a man <laughs> in the woods. Like you'll, you'll turn, I, I looked at it. You'll turn 18, like two days before the end of the trip. Really? Yeah. Wow. Which to me is really cool. Yeah. Like you'll be able to celebrate your birthday. Like, mm-hmm. um, there. So how do I jump? Like onto a ledge. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, but, there's no jump button, so you just sort of get there. Oh, uh, oops. Do you are you trying to do something? I was trying to now. Okay, there we go. Man, the sun is like oh hitting me. Hold on. Yeah, you can move. There we go. There you go. That's um, like right on me. And you can go back to that marker I placed. If you remember how to do that. No, no, I'm having a good time. That's good. All right. Run over this woman here. Get out of the way. <laughs> oh, man, that's a tough outfit. Um, Jude, how long do we have on that camera? What does it say? Uh, it's at eight minutes. Right eight minutes? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, so we only have eight minutes left. Yeah. Uh, Dad played this game, and I can't remember what it's called if he comes in. Ooh. Um, but he, it had to do with pirates. And there was a part, it was on a beach, and um, there was a turtle, like a big turtle, like a big old turtle, Mm -hmm. and he killed it. And I was like, was that, like, is that for food? Like, do you just (laughs) need that for food? He was like, no. I was like, you just killed a turtle for no good reason? He was Uh like, it's in a video game. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know, what does that say about you as a person that you would just, you would just kill a turtle for no good reason like i don't know i think if we had been dating that might have been the deal breaker might have mm. been like i don't know that i want to be with this guy isn't that silly yeah 
But it, I don't know. There was something about it. Like even in a video game, like I just said, you know, um, I'm going to run into that guy. Like I always feel bad about running into people <laughs> for no good reason in a video game. Uh huh. Like, like that guy just ran into me. Like if you had a reason for it, it would be acceptable. Well, yeah. Like if it was like, if there were points involved, if it was a mission, if there was a mission involved. Yeah. But just like for just the heck of it, cause you want to punch some, it's like the movie Westworld. Do you ever, you haven't seen Westworld no. and you don't, you're not allowed even when you're 20. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, to be fair, Westworld actually does bring up some really interesting ideas about what is a robot, what is a soul. Mm-hmm. You know, when does when does soul when does soulhood happen when it comes to consciousness? And anyway, all this interesting stuff. But like people in Westworld, if they go to Westworld, they like they would just do awful things to the mm-hmm. robots because they can. But mm-hmm. like I would say that 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 does something to your soul. Yeah, I think. Even in a video game. I, I think video I think games it, are different. Like, low-poly video games are different. I don't know. Like, like, if you did something, if it was so advanced that you could do some really graphically awful stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, Blade and Sorcery borders the line because it's VR. And you, yeah. can, you can stab people and chop people's arms so off like, and chop you don't their heads think off. That, but you don't think that, that that may... No, I think that is... is, is is border but, borderline but don't, you don't think it starts and it you start getting desensitized when it no like because you do it on a game like this because you still know it oh this yeah no i don't think this has like if i can run into pedestrians as many no, times no, no. as i want yeah pedestrians this is very yeah this you don't even hurt them uh-huh. like they're not hurt like you're not hurt when you like they genuinely try to get out of the way. You're not actually trying to hurt them, but even if you did, like they would more see they get out of the way when you get close to them. Yeah, but you can hit them. I know, but like you can't even hurt yourself <laughs> in this game. So if you were able to kill them, like yeah, if killing them hurt them, even in this game, I think that would be wrong. I just like it's it's a video game. I know, but I'm telling you. Uh, there, I think there's, there's a, a line. there's a desensitization that is occurring when that happens. Yeah, but like the the difference between doing that and in virtual reality, like the reason I think Blade and Sorcery bore, teeters the line is because it's it's in VR, so you're moving your hands as if you were doing those things, and you are stabbing and you are oh, you're cutting like using arms your off. body itself. Yes, it's not just. But even that, you still know it's not real. So this is is childish to me. It's like they're it's they're but NPCs. Ch- but child's play, right? When you play at mm-hmm. something as even as a child, like if you were to see a two year old play stabbing another two year old over time. Like if they did it every now and then because they thought it was funny, that'd be one thing. Uh huh. But if if you had a two year old that continued to do that as a three year old and then a four year old and then a five year old and they never seemed to get past that, well, I wouldn't think, you think there was something weird? Like there was something disordered happening inside them? Yeah, but even in that case, they are play stabbing another person. Like if they if they had like a a dude just standing there like mm-hmm. what's it called like a scarecrow but just a dummy like uh-huh. a wooden dummy standing uh-huh. there and they were they were hitting it and slashing it like they go out every day and just play fight it i don't mm-hmm. i don't think that even if they rip its arms off hmm. it's it's a wooden dummy do you think boys and girls you think males and females see the world differently when it comes to stuff like that yes very much so because because women have the job of being compassionate when men don't aren't supposed to like not necessarily aren't supposed to it's just one has to have they both need responsibilities that balance out Mm -hmm. so the responsibility of man to to govern and not be compassionate Mm -hmm. when um like that's why i'd I'd rather have a male manager at at my job than a female one Mm -hmm. because i don't i wouldn't feel bad if i had a male manager i wouldn't feel bad about saying hey i can't work this day because i'm I'm going to some concert or something. The dude would just be like, oh, okay, fine. All right. But a, a the woman, woman would be, be like, like, oh, what? <sighs> can you, we're, we're kind of understaffed. Can you, 
but she would appeal to your emotions. Yeah, or even even the guy would be like, I get that, but like we are understaffed, so just try your try your best to sort of understand that the next time you start planning stuff, like just let me know a little bit more in advance. Like, like you wouldn't feel like there was any emotion involved. Yeah, in it. because he's straight. He's being straight up, and I'm being straight up. Yeah, but but like. The, so there are there are pros and cons to being compassionate and um and so I do think it's it's Im, it's important to have that it's an important thing to to have yeah but. it's why I think um I think male nurses like shouldn't be on OB wards they shouldn't be what what is they should OB, OB obstetric obstetrics like where you uh oh what. <laughs> OB, OB is where you like help women give deliver babies and then help mm. them breastfeed after like birth. Like I don't want a male nurse in that situation. Yeah. But in an ER, male nurses are great because mm-hmm. we are, you're constantly, that was pretty cool. You're constantly needing. Um, if you press Y, the board will just teleport to you. You're constantly needing, you know, like male, male help. Like last night's a really good example. There was a guy that like pulled up in a car and he was completely unconscious. Like this big, this pretty big dude was unconscious. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry, but the 140 pound girls in the room aren't going to be able to get that guy out of the car, not mm-hmm. without injuring themselves. Whereas if you've got, and we had like this, we have this guy, he's like six foot four, and this big dude. He's a, a male nurse and he comes in and he just yanks the guy out of the car. No problem. So, like, both of those things are needed. You need female nurses in OB units, and you need male nurses in ERs, Mm -hmm. you know, for very good reasons. So, um, yeah, we do have different, and there's just a different level of, um, like, you see more male nurses in ERs, and you see more male nurses in surgical units. Mm -hmm. Um, Jude, how long do we have? 15 seconds. All right. Mom? Yep. Catherine Barron? Yes. It was very nice talking to you. Yeah, this was fun. Um, glad to have you on the show. Uh, thanks for coming on. Sure. Uh, peace out.